Eddie, what is it about free will that makes it a big question? Free will lies at the heart of our conception of ourselves and our conception of being morally responsible agents. So if people feel like they have free will, they feel like they're in control of their lives and they feel like what they do matters. And if they don't feel like they have free will, they feel like what they do is not making an impact on the world. And that relates to our conceptions of moral responsibility. If you're not responsible or if you think other people aren't responsible, then presumably you think they're less blameworthy for bad things and less praiseworthy for good things. And it might end up affecting the way we understand legal responsibility as well. How about the other direction? Is free will then a, a kind of a probe of, of what mentality and consciousness itself is? Well, I think free will is intimately tied up with consciousness and our sense of ourselves as uh, being aware of you know, our own agency and, and place in the world. Only conscious creatures can have free will. And I think that understanding free will is a way of understanding our consciousness of ourselves and our actions. Um, so, so it goes both directions. Yeah. Uh, which is more fundamental? I think consciousness is because I think in order to have free will, you have to be conscious of possible futures, possible mm -hmm. ways that you could act. I like to define free will as a set of capacities that we have, and largely cognitive capacities, capacities to think in a certain way, but also capacities to control our actions in a certain way. The cognitive capacities have to do with being able to envision or consciously represent alternatives for action and to reflect on your own reasons and desires for choosing each of those actions. And then the actional component is to be able to control your actions in light of the choices you make. It's one of the things that makes us different from most other animals. I think some animals have some degree of those capacities, but we have more of it. So considering free will's extreme importance to humanity, where did it come from? And a lot of people think of uh, free will as a God-given ability, especially religious people. Um, as a naturalist, I think free will and the capacities involved had to evolve. I have a little story about how that might have happened, if you want to hear it. I always like fairy tales. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it might be that, because evolutionary uh, psychology is a very difficult thing. But what we see is, in our nearest ancestors, there are abilities to uh, cooperate with each other and reciprocal altruism was very important in our primate ancestors. Mm -hmm. But once you have the ability to cooperate in that way, you also have a motivation to cheat um, because cheating is a way of getting a little bit more out of a cooperative exchange than you give. But as soon as you have that evolutionary pressure, there's gonna be a lot of evolutionary pressure to detect deception. And so I think what we saw in our primate ancestors is the ability to recognize other agents' minds. It's called theory of mind. Mm -hmm. And once you have that ability, you are able to represent mental states. That is, you can represent what desires other animals have, or other humans eventually, um, and therefore you can probably represent your own mental states. And because I think representing your own mental states and representing future states that don't exist yet is crucial to free will, I think those were the stepping stones to being able to have the capacities for free will. And so in a strange sort of sense, the evolution of being able to lie is what made us free.